There is one extraordinary syndrome called Capgras syndrome, which is so rare that even most neurologists have not heard of it. This refers to patients who are otherwise normal, sometimes in a psychiatric setting, but sometimes just after a head injury. The guy's been in a car accident, and maybe has been in a coma for a couple of weeks, and then comes out of the coma, seems quite normal, fluent in conversation, not emotionally disturbed, not hysterical in any obvious way, seems quite normal, except that he has one profound delusion. He looks at his mother, and he says, Doctor, this woman looks exactly like my mother. You know? He looks exactly like But she's not my mother. She's an imposter. She's pretending to be my mother. Okay? It's a replica. And he says this with a perfectly straight face. There is nothing else wrong with this guy. Okay? He can read a newspaper. He can talk to you about politics. He can talk to you about the Monica Lewinsky case. He can talk about anything you want. Okay? But when he looks at his mother, he says, this is an imposter, some other woman pretending to be my mother. How do you explain this extraordinary syndrome? The standard explanation is Freudian, and you find it in most psychiatry textbooks. And that is, this young man, when he was a baby, when he was an infant, like most infants, like all of us here, and the same argument applies in reverse to women, but I'll just talk about men. When you're babies, you had a strong sexual attraction to your mother. This is called the so-called Oedipus complex of Freud. Okay? I'm not saying I believe this, but I'm saying th this is the standard view, okay? Then you grow up, and then you repress these forbidden sexual urges. Thank God, otherwise all of us would be sexually aroused by your mother, okay? And then along comes a blow to the head, bang, and these repressed sexual urges come flaming to the surface. And then you say, my God, if this is my mother, why am I feeling sexually aroused when I see her? Okay? She must be some other strange woman, maybe it's pheromones, who knows what it is. This is the standard explanation, and it's a very ingenious explanation, as indeed most Freudian explanations are. Okay? <laughs> but it doesn't work, because I've seen patients with Capgras syndrome who have the same delusion, not about their mother, but about their pet poodle, about their dog. <laughs> now you think about it, how does the Freudian explanation work, work here? Okay? You can start talking about the inherent bestiality in all human beings, or something like that, but it simply doesn't work. And then I thought maybe there's a simpler explanation for this syndrome, namely, we know that in the temporal lobes there's an area called infratemporal cortex, which is concerned with just processing faces, recognizing faces. When that's damaged, you get prosopagnosia, you can no longer recognize people's faces. But when you look at any object in the world, it's processed there, and then it gets sent to the amygdala and to the limbic system, which are the emotional centers of the brain, so you're emotionally aroused by what you're looking at. If it's a slide projector, obviously you're not emotionally aroused. If it's, a, if it's a, you know, a light there, you're not aroused. But if you look at a mother, you say, wow, it's my mom. You know, there, is this, there is this warm glow or this terror, as, this, as the case may be, okay? When you look at your mother. When you look at somebody else who you've never seen before, there is no emotional arousal. So what I said was maybe what's wrong with this guy is, maybe the face area is normal. That's why he can still say, yeah, it looks like my mother. It is my, it looks like my mother. But the message doesn't get to the amygdala because this wire is cut because of the head injury. So he looks at his mother and he says, if it's my mom, why don't I feel anything? Must be some, there's something weird here. It must be some other strange woman. That's the only explanation that makes sense to him given his, this disconnection I'm talking about. Now, how do you test this? Well, you can test it very easily by using what we call a galvanic skin response. When any one of you, if I show you computerized images, com sorry, images on the, on the computer of different objects, a slide projector, the message gets processed in the visual centers, in the temporal lobes, and you identify a slide projector, goes to the amygdala, which gauges the emotional significance of what you're looking at. My God, is this a predator? My God, is this a mate? Is this my mom? Or is it just a slide projector? I can ignore it, okay? The amygdala does that, and then it cascades into the rest of the limbic system, into the hypothalamic nuclei, down the autonomic nervous system, okay, down the autonomic nervous system, and then what happens is your skin starts sweating, your heart starts pounding, you prepare the body for fighting, fleeing, feeding, or sexual behavior, okay? Your body gets prepared for action. Your heart starts pounding, and your skin starts sweating because you want to dissipate heat because you're going to be doing something, you're going, to do, you're going to be doing something active, okay? 
You can measure the change in skin resistance by, put, by putting two electrodes on the palm of the hand. And this measures the change in resistance. So when I put any one of you here in front of the screen and show you a slide projector, there's no change in resistance. But if I show you, uh, if I show you a stranger, there is no change in resistance. But if I show you your mom, you say, wow, mom, OK? Instantly, it cascades in and it makes you, believe it or not, every time you see your mom, you sweat. <laughs> All of you here, OK? Whereas if I show you some stupid inanimate object like the slide projector or something like a shoe or something like that, nothing happens. Unless you have a shoe fetish, then you can, you know, <laughs> that's a different matter, OK? Now, what about our patient? So we had a patient, he came into, the, uh, into, our, into our office, and I hooked him up to the galvanic skin response. I showed him slide projectors, nothing. That's obvious. I showed him tables and chairs, nothing. I showed him people he has never seen, nothing. Then I showed him his mother, nothing. No galvanic skin response. But as any one of you here in the audience, if you see your mother, you get a huge big galvanic response. This supports our argument that there's been a disconnection. Now, the reason I'm telling you about this syndrome this is a striking example of cognitive neuroscience, the power of this whole new approach to neuroscience, to the brain. And that is you can take a completely bizarre, seemingly incomprehensible neurological syndrome. Seems almost like the guy is nuts. Seems like a psychiatric syndrome. You know, the guy is saying his mother is an imposter. And then say, no, the Freudian explanation is wrong. There's a specific disconnection here between the amygdala the emotional centers in the brain, and the visual centers in the brain. And that's what explains his curious predicament. And then you can spend one hour doing an experiment and show that that's what's gone wrong in his brain.